uh, hi everyone we will uh, discuss uh, what we are going to present on the final presentation in our work product which is going to be evaluated by uh, the mentors so firstly i would like to discuss the results we've got from uh, so justin gave a brilliant idea of uh, so I had the results in my local instance with uh, on the Mac OS operating system and Justin gave me the idea to do the same thing for multiple platforms so that we have a, uh, a larger variety, a larger size of data, which is always a great thing. So, um, so I, I created three pipelines. Uh, these three, pipe, the first one is checking out uh, the Spark repository. Spark is around 500 MB. Uh, then the second project, uh, the Git2, testing two project is uh, checking out uh, TensorFlow, which is around 800 MB. Then the third one I am uh, uh, selecting uh, is checking out is Git plugin, which is around 20 MB. So what I wanted to see was uh, when the threshold is, uh, okay, so I also have to talk about one more thing I should talk about before talking the results. So I was, um, the size rule we have within the Git2 chooser right now, that is 5 MB. So within the 5 MB limit, we would provide JGit, we would recommend JGit. After 5 MB, we would uh, recommend Git. Uh, so off lately, I, I saw a lot of results uh, where uh, in the benchmarks where for repository sizes like uh, 20 MB or 40 MB or 50 MB, I was seeing that JGit is performing better than Git and by some margin that that margin can be, let's say uh, 40 uh, milliseconds or maybe 80 milliseconds. So there is a considerable, uh, not in terms of real performance, but in terms of our uh, theoretical experiment, the, the gap was there. So, so I, uh, the, the jar, which is uploaded in this instance, it, it contains, uh, has, it has an uh, increased size limit to 50 MB instead of 5 MB. So let's just start with Git plugin, how, um, how it has done uh, the Git tool choosers. So, um, so first of all, um, the user has, the assumption here is that the user has chosen JGit and now the projects have been checked out. And um, I just want to show one more thing uh, before showing the results because I want to confirm that my process of uh, testing this experiment, this creating this and performing this variant is right. So this is the Jenkins file I used to do this. In this Jenkins, Jenkins file, there I am not performing anything. It's, it contains an empty step, but it checks out the repository. So I just wanted to check out the repository and do nothing. I did not want uh, a Maven build process or anything. And uh, since I had a project where uh, the matrix, where I have a matrix which runs on multiple platform, but it builds on Maven, I just removed that step and I use this. Is is this wrong in any way? It's, yes. it's, it's not wrong, but it's got a problem that I would expect you to get a failure on Windows, it will say I can't find SH. If you just change it yes, to Echo, yes. if you change it to mm -hmm. Echo and say Echo Hello World, then you've got a platform independence step. But other than that, this looks great. And I can tell you CentOS 8 is always cloud hosted. Debian 10 is okay. almost always cloud hosted. And Windows computers in my environment are all modern. They are all within the last three or four years. So those okay. three, are, are quite predictable. FreeBSD 12 is older hardware, but given that you're probably network bandwidth bound, it may be fine. And what if I remove the SH step? It's just an empty I, step. Would that, that may also be okay. I would just put the echo in because I'm not sure that declarative pipeline will accept an empty, an empty step. Empty block. step, okay. It's, it's cheap. I think that's what I tried in. first. Okay, okay, man. I'll, I'll do that. That is that explains uh, some of the builds fail. So, um, so now what you're seeing here is uh, the third build. If you look at the third build, uh, that is done without uh, JGit. One second, I'm just gonna just give me a second. Oh, and are you is this 
doing something that will allow it to wipe the workspace so it's not reusing a workspace? Yes. Okay, great. Yes, I, I have added the additional behavior uh, wipe, wipe out clean workspace and force reclone that, that behavior. Great. Yes, so, um, okay. So the second build is without the Git tool chooser and the third build is with the Git tool chooser. Now, uh, with CentOS 8, we do not see any change. And since we are looking at now, the, the, our, uh, our measuring unit of the metric is seconds. It's not milliseconds. So in milliseconds, we would automatically see uh, differences that, that I've seen with the benchmarks. But now since we're talking about real cases and we want to show real results, we will talk about seconds because that is what the user might see. Uh, and, uh, and in that case in CentOS, we don't see any difference. In Debian, we do see a seconds difference. With FreeBSD, I think the build failed. I'm not sure why this happened. It took 10 seconds. It should not take 10 seconds for uh, any, I think, machine to uh, copy Git plugin, uh, check out Git plugin, uh, clone. So, uh, so I'm sure, so what I can be sure of is that there is, there will not be more than a second's difference when we're talking about reposit, report, repositories less than 50 MB. So, uh, because one might ask in our final presentation, or representing it, a user might ask what kind of, uh, so our performance improvements are the, the bigger performance improvements or the, uh, or the more attractive results we have are, are, um, are from the area where a person, when it chooses uh, the JGIT implementation, then we are able to uh, provide a better implementation and give a much visible result. But in general, when a person mostly uses of what I, uh, of what knowledge I have, a, a user would not the user would go for the default implementation. And I assume that the default implementation will mostly be Git because Git is installed in machines uh, commonly. So in that case, for most user, the change in performance uh, will not be noticeable. It's, they might see a seconds difference. They might not, I, I might need to uh, perform this, this experiment repetitively so that I see so that is when I can be confident that I, okay, I know that uh, within 50 MB uh, there, I can, I can see that there is a reduction of one second or maybe half a second or uh, something like that. With Windows also, we see that uh, it's, it's the same. So in, in the benchmarks, I've, uh, I've I created and I ran, uh, there's almost a half, half a second's difference when we're talking about, it ranges, but if we average the results, it's almost, it varies from half a second to let's say uh, three fourths of a second. So that is why it's, it's unlikely that we will see uh, any noticeable performance change when we're but, talking but, about. But your measurements show, show that even for a repository as relatively small, like Git plugin, there is a benefit in terms of clone time to use JGIT. That's good. Yes, yes, there, there is. Because, because the, 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 the most important, the vital uh, insight we uh, derived from the benchmarks was that for a small repository because of the, um, because the JVM heats up and uh, JGIT is a Java implementation, it performs better. So, so that advantage uh, makes JGIT a better contender for smaller size repositories than Git. But in general cases, Git will always perform better. And in large size repository uh, cases, it would exponentially perform better than JGIT. So, uh, so because when, when I was creating the presentation, I was thinking, what would I answer to a person who would ask for most of the users, what would happen? Because for JGIT, we, we have great results for JGIT and I'm going to show them to you. But I was, I was, I was worried that would that be enough uh, for us? So, so this, this project was uh, focused on a, a repository size less than 50 MB. Now uh, let's look at uh, something larger, drastically larger. So this is a nine, 800 MB repository almost. So uh, 
here the fourth build the last build the latest build is um is a uh, without git tool chooser um build and the previous one is with git tool chooser so if you look at any of uh, the platform for till free bsd there's there's 50% reduction in the execution time checking out process uh yeah and it's more than that for this i no it's it's almost it's actually more than that for this one free bsd and uh, but with windows i i saw this and i could not understand it actually reduced without git tool chooser which i did not understand so um, i i am actually not very confident with the results i have i may have to run some tests particularly on windows if it's showing this behavior con uh, consistently that is, with is, git tool uh... Rishab, on the Windows yes. is Git CLI installed? Like just to confirm us. Uh, yes. Okay, I. The Windows it is, and we can. We can. However, it's possible that the, the the change from one agent to another, from build three to build four. So there are there are all sorts of potential variability because we're he's testing in a in a live environment that has four or five Windows computers. Hmm. And well, we can check that out. The recommended Git tool is Git, and I am so it is using Git here with the build with the uh, the results we've seen. So oh oh, it does have Git. And yes, ma'am. Don't forget, to, we've we've now been a month or more since we talked about it. But in your final presentation, don't forget to highlight that avoid second fetch for some users may be a substantial improvement already. It's just. Just dodging the second fetch, we had reports from users that it was very that was slow. Even if they get no other benefit, they get benefit because we're doing one less operation. Back yes, I, I I have included that in my presentation very because good. I I was desperately looking for points to to show what we've done, so I I did uh, include that. So um, so I I think this uh, this result. Um, somehow uh, confirms that there is uh, uh, let's say around about 50% decrease in uh, so a 50% improvement uh, when we using git tool chooser but in a particular case and uh, i think we'll have the same result with the git tool chooser testing project which is uh, checking out the spark repository it's actually not the same here what we what what we what we can see is this the 10th build is with the git tool chooser and the latest build is without one so for centos it's almost the the time reduces 10 seconds or whatever it is to it's not even 10 seconds it's less than that so this is uh, i would say surprising because uh, the benchmarks i have uh, Uh, i performed throughout the project for 3 months i saw um, improvement in order of 150 160% 1, when we shifted from git to jgit for large size repository like 500 600 700 that reduced to 50% here when i'm actually um, doing this end to end this is not just the git fetch operation isolated this is the whole uh, git plugin performing a complex operation uh so i somehow um, i justified that uh, this the reason of not seeing the same exact result with what we saw in in the benchmarks here with uh, with the fact that this is this is now not just a single isolated operation but i am not sure why this would happen why we would have lesser reduction here so again this is why uh, i'm i'm actually not very confident with the results i am confident that there is a reduction and it's around 50% because my local instance is giving that for five or six jobs i've seen and it's almost consistent with that result but here in this instance i'm not seeing that so uh, maybe i need to run more jobs and uh, then add those results to the presentation actually so i would just i would just admit that in the in a very repeatable environment you've confirmed these results however in the wild or in 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 environments that have widely variable equipment 
the results are also widely variable. I'm not overly concerned that you need to run it again. I think large variability is predictable in this environment where you're te it, this, this is not too different than if you were running these tests on ci.jenkins.io where you don't know what class of agent you get. You, you just get an agent that has the label. Okay. Okay, then I can, uh, yes, I can include the results and I can add that uh, kind of a note that the environment we are testing in can include a lot of variability. So, uh, so okay. So I think uh, these are the results we have from uh, the kit tool chooser. And uh, this is what I will be presenting in a different format. I was thinking graphs, comparative bar graphs, where we see, uh, I'll, I'll ensure that the bar graphs on the slide only. So, uh, okay, I'll, I'll go to the agenda once. So, uh, Mark, I just wanted to ask, uh, so whatever testing we've done, are we still, do we have uh, any case where uh, uh, any compatibility is breaking, a use case is breaking for, uh, after adding it to choose it, do we, have any cases like that or are we left with some kind of testing? So there is, there is certainly still more testing to do, but the testing I think that needs to be done is not, not as much about compatibility as about the change that, that using JGIT brings on the master or on static agents. We're on the master and on static agents. Now we're running in process and we're relying on JGIT to do a good job of garbage collection. Right. If if okay. JGIT has a leak, it could it could critically damage the the, Jenk, the Jenkins controller, the central master. If uh, I'm not aware of any leak, I've not detected one. But that's one of my concerns. Yeah. Is if a if a, a a controller that previously was managing a thousand repositories or a thousand jobs suddenly develops a is exercising a memory leak in JGIT that didn't exist before because they were using CLI Git, that would be a, yeah. a, a serious problem. Those, okay. those are the only kinds of things. I'm, I haven't seen anything compatibility wise and if we do, we'll fix it in an upcoming release. So I think that answers my question of increasing the size limit to 50 MB then right now. We would be, it would be safer to release it with a five MB size because that would make sure that we do not, if we have something like that, a catastrophic um, memory leak issue or something like that, then we would, it would be safer to release it with five MB because that would not cover as many projects as a five, 50 MB size mm -hmm. limit would. I would say with a 50 MB limit, we would maybe cover most of the cases. It depends on the use case, but so I, I have the PR ready to increase the size to 50, but if, um, but I, I wanted to ask, if, do we want to do that right now before releasing or can, should we do that after um, releasing it? So well, I like your argument that we wait till after release. You could queue the pull request. It can still be submitted certainly, but I think let's go with the current, the, the tested values just to, to see the, the bigger danger here is that we're yeah. going to, this will be deployed in <clears throat> within two or three weeks, it will probably be deployed in 50,000 installations. And that's, that's mm -hmm. only 25% of the, the install base, but 50,000 installations and those installations will have, have conditions that you and I haven't even dreamt of yet. I understand. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll go with that then. And uh, so do we have any other requirement for the release? Um, Mark and... I'm not aware of any, uh, unless Fran, Justin, or Omkar have any, I think we're ready to, ready to deliver a release. Gonna need a celebration. <laughs> That's the only other requirement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I think we have some time left, so. <laughs> I think we can talk about the presentation. So we have discussed the experiment I've done for, uh, uh, for measuring the time. And so I was also thinking, do, uh, is there any way, can you, uh, the mentors can, uh, is there any other way we can show the results? Except, um, 
so is this the is this the best way to uh, to be as near as a user would expect the results to to show the results which are as near as a user would expect once they have this feature in their systems to to just um, measure end to end the time which is being executed for this process for me i think that's closest to what the user wants as some at some point in the future not not for presentation but at some point in the future i think users would appreciate an online guide which would tell them in addition to these results if you use a reference repository things get this much better if you use a narrow ref spec on a repository things could get this much better so there there are things there are other things that are candidates but for for purposes of this project i think presenting the the time to do the operation is the right kind of result at least for me as a user it 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 talks to me it tells me what i wanted to know gee will i get a benefit from this what are the risks of doing this and how do you get the benefit like right. do you need to do an extra thing here and there to get extra benefits well actually as justin's got a very good point there most mm -hmm. users do not have jget enabled so they will get no benefit from this because I suspect most installations did not even enable JGit. So in order to get benefit, we need to remind them, you need to enable JGit. But, uh, but then if, if someone doesn't even have JGit and they have Git, then why, what benefit would they get if they already have the performance? Uh, small, small repositories clone a little faster. Small repository, yes. Right? Yes. Small repositories clone a little faster. Yes. And, at the, so for me, one of the surprises was I had a pipeline that uses a pipeline library and it would intelligently choose JGit to clone the pipeline library and then intelligently choose Git to clone the, the repository. So I got a little bit of a benefit already because the pipeline library pulled in with JGit and then the, the, the whole big project came in with command line Git. Okay. Yes. And uh, I would since uh, I think um, uh, we haven't seen how um, the switch is looking like I, I have put up a screenshot for it, but still. So uh, do we need a demo for this? I don't I haven't planned a demo. I was thinking of just showing the results and how it's going to impact the user. But because there is not I am not sure how we could demo this uh, performance improvement. But uh, Justin's point that the user should know how we can enable or disable and then uh, what configurations would provide better results. I think that much we can show uh, in the presentation, in the meetup. So how and much time? Oh, go ahead, Justin. No, I, I was just going to say, I don't know like that it would necessarily need to be like demo. That be could also be like screenshot or... Uh... I think mm. you had documented some stuff from the readme or something like that. But okay. anyways, in documentation would be useful, I think, for the long term. For this purpose, maybe screenshot yeah. or could be demo or something like that. But uh, maybe Mark had an idea too. Yeah, I like okay. show the show the documentation is also a good excuse to brag that yes, we're doing documentation as code. We wrote the documentation before we released the product. That, that hardly ever happens okay. in most software. So, so. <laughs> okay. Oops, okay. there it is. Yeah, this one. Unfortunately, so this, is, this is this is a place where you're really begging for the new table to div UI because you notice that the help buttons are completely invisible on the right hand side of your screen. Yes. Yes. Because of because of the table layout that you used here. That's it's mm. it's a terrible thing on this particular. Yeah, but I think. Your screenshot that you embedded in the documentation is perfect. Show it hmm. and, okay. and bring up the documentation. We should brag to people that, yes, guess what? This is documented. Please, please note you can read about it. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. So, um, one thing that I'm wondering about, and I don't know that maybe this is a question that would come up too, is like, I wonder if it would make sense or if it'd be possible to have JGit enabled. If, if this proves to bear fruit for tons of people, like if that's something that could be done at some point to 
automatically enable Jay Get Jenkins because it comes. You with... are you are such a brave person. Oh my <laughs> sakes, you are a brave person. <laughs> Asking Mark Wait to change defaults as shipped. Yeah, that I love brave. That's great. I'm not ready to sign up for that. I haven't been stabbed with as many spears as you in the open source community. <laughs> Just the number of times people have complained to me about any change of defaults. It's like, no, I had this awful evil default, but I love it. It's my favorite. Maybe that's the answer if that question comes up to you is like, right. a lot of people have strong preferences that they prefer not to have Jay get enabled. But, but they, they, yeah, it, this is, they have to make an active choice. They must choose. Uh, and if they've chosen not to enable JGit, we won't override their choice. That's fair. And on top, and on top of that, I was thinking that maybe we can we can also add a feature where we don't even ask the user for the implementation. We ourselves figure out what is available and then recommend the best thing there is. But I, I think that is not. Um, we we shouldn't yeah. do that because you you win that. extra points. You're even more bold than Justin is. That's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the warnings and log warning. You do not have JGit get enabled. We are, are you sure about it. that? <laughs> We're enabling, We're enabling it. it. And we, we just turn it on for you. For not having it. We'll help you here. We also deleted <laughs> command line git. Exactly. Because it's an old, uh, old thing. <laughs> Although yeah, truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, there is, there is something to be said for things like we probably ought to warn people, oh, you're running CentOS, CentOS 8. Your Git command line Git implementation is an old boat anchor. You should you should upgrade. Mm. But uh, your CentOS, sorry, it's CentOS seven is the really the yeah. boat anchor. CentOS mm -hmm. seven is running a Git from like six or eight years ago, and you know the Git community has improved performance in that long a time. They they mm. you absolutely can be confident. Mm. But but no, that's out of scope here as well, Rishab. No, that you, yes. I think that's a great thing for the future. Um, it's called an administrative monitor where we warn people, warn the administrator, you know you're running an ancient version of Git on this computer? Mm. Okay. So, or um, offer to them, you could have much better performance if you just would do this. And uh, from a user's perspective, if uh, I'm not sure uh, how many users so mostly I assume that the users of Jenkins product would be developers. So I'm not sure still what percentage of them are, are uh, aware of the implementations, the two options we have within the Git plugin. And that is why we always have the default option. And the default option, I just want to make sure that I understand it. The default option means that um, if Git, Git is installed there, it will always be the def default option. But if Git is not installed, the default would be JGit and the user will not get to know that. It would, it would be default from their perspective. Mm -hmm. No, as far as I know, no. if, if it will never use JGit unless you have enabled JGit, or the, the previous behavior anyway was, if I don't have command line Git installed, it will attempt to call command line Git anyway. And it will then fail terribly ugly failure message and says, Git, command not found. So it, it's not nearly smart okay. enough to say, oh, I didn't find command line Git, I'll try JGit. It's, it's absolutely dumb. It says, if you, if you ask to use the Git plugin and you don't have command line Git install and you did not enable and choose JGit, you will just get a hard error message. Okay. I, I, and I that, can't imagine that is a, a safer Linux computer. option. What's uh, safe, safer? No, it's just consistent with, with old behavior. It's, I'm not sure I'd call it safer at all, but it's, it's certainly lower change to users. It, it will not surprise them that, oh, I forgot to install Git. They must go install Git. Okay, and that means then the usability of JKit is, uh, is quite, I'm, I'll not say remote, but only people who would know about JKit or might have any use case. Right. Mm. You need to have okay. read the documentation and seen, oh, there's a JGIT implementation. Wow, should I try this? Yeah, mm. that's okay. correct. Okay. Which honestly, I guess if we're, if we're looking for these kinds of performance improvements at a broader scale, you're probably dealing with someone who's an administrator of Jenkins. And so they probably will have read the documentation in most cases. Like 
Joe user who's got a little Jenkins on his laptop with five projects probably doesn't care about it quite as much as like. Mm -hmm. That's well, and, and anyone, anyone that's dealing with multi hundred megabyte repositories, we hope will eventually ask themselves the question, could I go faster? Is there something I could do to go faster? And they'll start exploring. And, and that's, that's a whole new theme and a whole new topic of what are the things we could do to help them go faster? Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll just quickly uh, discuss what I want to present and the, the structure of the presentation. So I was thinking to introduce uh, the project, what we wanted to do. And, um, and I, I, I have a question here, I think. So, um, okay, so uh, right now our performance improvement is uh, focused and limited to the checkout step. And what I wanted to ask was this, whenever there's a checkout step in any project in Jenkins for any Jenkins pipeline, Git plugin is the exclusive plugin which would be used for that. I wanted to confirm. Okay. The, if, but, they're using, yes. if they are using a Git repository, they will oh, use yes. the checkout SCM step, we'll use Git. We'll use the Git okay. plugin, yes. Okay, and the second question uh, is, the second part to that question is that, uh, but when we're scanning repositories, scanning branches, sorry, uh, for a particular repository, at that point, there's a fetch step, and then uh, I think we, um, we scan the branches and then we uh, uh, build the branches if we want to. It depends on what the user wants to. So for that process, for the scanning process, that is something it's not exclusive to ex exclusive responsibility of git plugin or is correct. it that's that's correct so the the in fact it's recommended that they wherever possible not use the git plugin to do scanning because the higher okay. level providers github bitbucket giddy um gitlab those higher level mm -hmm. providers can ask the questions more efficiently than the low level provider can so so the higher the preference for a user should be if you're using one of the things that has a higher level provider use the higher level provider it's more efficient okay so so okay. yes it so, can be used for scanning branches but it's recommended that they please use the higher level provider it'll give them better results okay. the git plugin does not know how to do rest api calls to github Right. It doesn't know how to do REST API calls yes. to GitLab, and those REST API calls can be dramatically better than cloning an entire repository to get its his, to get its information. To get its yes, that is what the Git plugin does, right? Okay. Right. It, the Git plugin sense. is is like a stone knife, whereas whereas the, the the higher level plugins can use lasers and other really effective cutting tools. Mm. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, so after the introducing the project and the, uh, then I was thinking about uh, going through to, uh, to the process of how we've reached to the conclusions right, we right now before introducing Git tool chooser or the results. Because I think we don't, uh, for most of the projects and students, a demo is, is uh, eats up a chunk of their, of their presentation because demo is something they have to do for their plugin but for my case i don't have a demo there so uh, i was thinking to uh, use that time to uh, not go into too much depth but just just show how our results the results we've used to uh, uh, to enable get to choose it uh, how we've reached to that point and i just wanted to i was thinking of talking about um, we we uh, the, the parameters we chose to see, to see the dependence of the operations and the performance uh, where they range from the size of the uh, objects the repository contains, the number of branches, commits and tags, what we got out of them, just a one line uh, uh, result, not the problems we've had with them, but the results, the conclusion we had. Uh, and, and then sort of talk about um, We've also uh, benchmarked those uh, results uh, with multiple platforms. So we know that uh, the Git tool chooser will not perform unexpectedly. Uh, 
in one of the platforms we we know it's uh, it's platform independent in terms of uh, the benefit it is giving we did see that with one of the benchmarks i presented in the last presentation in the phase 2 presentation so i i was thinking of showing that as a as part of the process of how we reach the results and i think that gives the user more confidence that our results or whatever get tool chooser is doing is is legitimate and uh, then i was uh, i was thinking uh, to visually explain how and where we've improved and i was i was just thinking to show that if you're checking out a repository from one of these providers so there's this the, the scm checkout step we've we've done two things there we've introduced a new a new feature which is get to choose it which i want to say i want to market it as a feature which takes the responsibility of choosing the right implementation from the user and let the system decide that but i'm not sure if it's the right thing because we actually okay it is it is so i i i was thinking of introducing it like that and then the second thing we've done is that we've removed the second fetch which is redundant in most cases and um, i would add that it was requested by users and it would benefit those users and uh, so i would refine this diagram but this is how i was thinking of visually um, explaining what we've done and then with the results i would show uh, the graphs we have uh, the graphs I, i haven't showed you any graph i've shown you uh, the builds but i would i would uh, put all of that in a graph and then um, i was thinking of showing uh, so i what what would be better to show multiple repositories varying from a small size to a large size right that would be the best thing to do to show the performance improvements uh, from a small repository and then let's take it to a big repository and uh, and in, in that process explain that for a small repository jgit is performing better than git and then for a large repository git is performing better than jgit and that decision of switch is being taken care by uh, the feature we've implemented in git plugin so and after that i i would include slides of the challenges we faced and what uh, future scope or what we have to do which which is the last thing i want to discuss for this meeting that we the the extension support for the extension support we uh, i think mark and i we both tested uh, the github branch source plugin extension implementation it is providing us the information we need with credentials or without and uh, but that hasn't been merged uh, in their plugin so it's officially not available to the user so i so i wanted to discuss what should i say in the presentation should uh, because that's because we ideally we want to provide that support for uh, G, uh, github gitlab and uh, gitty bitbucket but with each for gitlab we've had some issues and there is a, a, a actually a roadblock there uh, in implementing uh, the ex we have implemented the extension but the way the credentials are passed is something which is not currently uh, possible with git plugin do we want to go in there and discuss the issues we've had with those extensions okay okay so, so at least for yes. me i would say we t we talk about what more is needed and what's needed is we need an extension implemented for gitlab mm. for bitbucket mm. for giddy uh, probably for tulip so there are, there are several branch source providers that would that mm. could provide this information from their rest api and and it may be you that does it it may be them that does it but the we've now got an api they should they should provide the data mm. okay but back, why would um, i think why would they uh, why would they do it it's not something i'm not sure because um it's 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 an information with the git plugin requires is, is actually it means nothing to them in terms of functionality of that plugin oh oh except i think it does imagine imagine you are atlassian and you're providing the bitbucket plugin and you learn that the users who are using github are getting better performance because the github branch source hmm. implemented this api uh you are now at a competitive disadvantage because somebody's got a better implementation than yours. No, yeah, so that now sense. now for a an, an an open source thing like Giddy down at the very bottom it's harder to say that but for GitLab certainly GitLab's primary competitor is not really Jenkins it's GitHub. Right? Mm -hmm. And if if GitHub is doing a better job 
than GitLab is doing on, on the Jenkins implementation, users may shy away from GitLab and towards GitHub. Mm, okay. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, now, so we'll- uh, I, I yes, don't know that yes. you want to say that in an open source presentation, but I'm just thinking from the, for them as providers, they may say, look, I don't want to be behind these other people. I want to, I want to be at least as good as they are. Okay, so, um, so that means that we will, uh, we will discuss uh, the extensions and the support we have right now and what we need in the future to uh, make this feature fully, uh, um, I would say useful to every provider and every use case for every user. Okay, so I, I will add that and um, uh, I think that's it. That's, that's what I think I would present for uh, the meetup. And then I also have to present for the DevOps world. So I was thinking to uh, be more uh, concise and uh, include lesser details about the implementation or uh, I would say just talk about the general improvement we've done. And uh, that's what I was thinking to include there. So- Yeah, uh, You're, they're giving you 10 minutes. Is that right at, at DevOps world? Yes, it's a lightning yeah, so talk, yes. This, this slide that you've got on visible right now is a great opening slide for that talk. Yes, okay. I think it's not the right slide to open the, the, the GSOC presentation, but it's, mm -hmm. this is a great slide for a, a DevOps world thing because it grabs them immediately. It's got pretty colors. It's got logos. Mm -hmm. yeah, I understand. You may want to put yes, Git tool uh, chooser in bigger words somewhere and, and redundant as it gets bigger somewhere, you know, so, so, but, but this is a, is a great choice as an intro slide for a 10 minute uh, lightning talk. Lightning talk, okay. Okay, so, uh, so I think that's it. Uh, anything, uh, do we need anything more? Uh, so uh, from the Google, uh, from the GSOC team, I, I got a mail that we, I uh, need to uh, send them the link for the work product. And in our case, I would assume the work product is, uh, the pull request uh, for Git tool chooser, which is now merged, because I think sending the Git plugins URL would not be the right thing because that is not exactly the work product. The work product is uh, the performance enhancement within it, and uh, service and and uh, regarding the work product, is there anything uh, else the mentors would like um, apart from what is done here? Uh, any more requirement is uh, yeah. So not, so I think. It, it, you've got an interesting challenge. Uh, it, you may want to send them a link to a document which shows links to the various work products, right? Because we have one work product, which is the Git client plugin implementation that had to release. Mm. We have another work product, yes. which is Git plugin pull 931 and Git release 440. We have another work mm. product, which is the GitHub branch source pull request that is pending. And each of those is in fact part of this work. Right. So, okay. so for me, it's, it, it, if, if the, if their request is a single link to the work product, then that's probably needs to be a document, which actually has mm -hmm. links to all the real products, you know, the pull requests, the conversations, mm -hmm. because it, saying it's just Git plugin, it's not right. Your project has changed much exactly. more than just the Git plugin. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make a document for that. Probably a gist, maybe a GitHub gist. I could do something like that and then uh, show them that. Okay, I understand. Okay. Either that or you know what you could do, Rishab, what if you put it on the Jenkins.io page that describes the project? Okay, I could update oh. the project page. Right, because the I project haven't done page, that, yes. Right, and that's a great excuse to update the project page. And that's a place yes, where we yes. can put links to multiple pull requests and, mm. and to plug in releases. Yes, Git client plugin 342. Git plugin 440 and it's the pull request, it's all sorts of things like that. Yes, great idea. I'll, I'll do that. I'll update the project page first because I have to write a blog as well. I haven't done that. So, yes. Okay. Um, so, I guess uh, this is it uh, for the presentation. And uh, so, Mark, uh, we uh, will release uh, the plugin today, tomorrow. Uh, is there a time? For 
It will Same. probably, so I've got a day full of work for my employer, so it will probably be That's after 12 hours. So thus, hmm. Rishab, I'm authorizing you for once in the last four weeks to sleep. Sorry. <laughs> That's Rishab and I spent all day Saturday, all day my day Saturday, working on this, like, testing it, exploring it, and at the end of it, it's 4 p.m. my time, and I realize, oh, it's about 4 a.m. Rishab's time, and he's obviously not <laughs> yes. slept all night long. So, yeah, That's sorry. Okay. This is, yeah, it will, it will be at least 12 hours before I get to releasing it. Or it, it, think, think 12 hours, because it, it may only hmm. be 8, but it will be after my working day today when I can get to the time to release the Git plugin. That's that's fine. That's okay. I was just okay. So um, okay. So we uh, I think we have everything covered here, and uh, presentation is on Thursday. So uh, okay, then we'll meet there. I hope I give a great presentation. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone. You rock it. You you will be great, <laughs> Rishab. I am I am thrilled, and you're you're written now. We may we may create a firestorm if if we miss something in our testing, right? And and that's mm. that happens sometimes. Git plugin releases have on occasion created firestorms. So so don't be dismayed if we miss something in our testing and people come back and say, "How dare you?" That's okay. We're... So there there is something where I am a little concerned, and that is related to um, uh, how uh, yeah the Git tool chooser will. Um, provide the implementation uh, when we are talking about expanded paths. So because we are processing paths and then we're giving that, we talk about implementation, but it's actually the executables path, which are, which we are passing when it's, when it's Git, which is like uh, slash user bin Git, um, if you're talking about the Linux system. So uh, I'm actually a little, there was a check which I added before, uh, before uh, the final pull request, which I added to uh, include um, uh, the implementation where there's an expanded path instead of just git. But that was uh, making one of the builds fail in your system. And then I removed that check and surprisingly everything is working fine. Even the expanded path I've checked that uh, particular use case, it's working fine. And so I'm a little, uh, I'm actually a little uh, anxious about that because I've removed the check and my unit test cases are fine and whatever we've tested is fine, but I am still a little skeptical of that. Um, I, I think we might have issues if we would possibly have issues where the implementation might somehow get changed, with what, oh. which might result in, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, this is me being a little negative. And, and skeptical about the about the whole uh, feature, and but the, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll I'll do some initial smoke test some smoke testing as well before release because I think it's a good place. If you feel concerned, it's a good place for somebody else to look at it as well. And, and, yes, ma'am. Yes. If I if I find some disaster, I'll let you know. Yes, ma'am. Please, right. I'll I'll be up to fix that. Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for giving. Uh, this this, this. Uh, so shall we shall we be covering like uh, more test cases with uh, more versions of Git CLI maybe like uh, after the merge? That's that's certainly one one possible future activity is comparing Git one point eight ancient history to Git two point twenty eight modern modern recent release to see if there's something. The other is there are more operations that we could optimize like LS remote, right? It's we, Rishab correctly focused on mm. the big, the big win. The big win was checkout or a clone. Mm. You know, the big win is clone. It's network operation. But there are other operations where we could actually prove conclusively that JGIT is good enough and silently replace it. So, so yes, Omkar, you're right. There are many more things we could do in the future. Uh, but Mark, I think we we did benchmark Git LS remote, uh, and uh, I think I have a I have a study related. I, I did uh, quite extensively uh, experiment with Git LS remote. Oh, good. And, uh, okay. I, I don't I don't remember what conclusions did we derive from that. Uh, I think I I look for that document and I we can discuss that on uh, the, the GitHub chat platform. Great. I, I'm not I'm not sure what. 
I'll, I'll, I'll send the document. I'll first find it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for uh, Thanks. again giving much more time than is allocated for our meeting. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Recording Bye. will be posted.